Welcome to our lecture online. The next problem has to do with nuclear decay. So you can see that the problems always jump around to different topics and you always have to be able to refocus onto the new topic. So we have nuclear decay. The problem reads a heavy nucleus Q of half-life 20 minutes undergoes alpha decay with probability of 60% and beta decay with probability of 40%. Initially the number of Q nuclei is 1000 the number of alpha decays in the first one hour is, and they give us four possible answers. So right away I look at that question and I read that the half time is 20 minutes and they want to know what happens after one hour, which is three half lives. All right, so the best way to do this problem is probably to, through drawing some diagrams. So let's say we start with 1,000 nuclei. So we have 1,000 nuclei, and so call them Q. So after the first 20 minutes, half of them will decay. So that means that we have 500 left that are Q nuclei, and of the 500 that decayed, 60% of them will have gone through an alpha decay and 40% through a beta decay. So the best way to look at it is this. So we have 60% and 40%, so that would be alpha and beta decay of the 500 that were decayed, because after one half-life, half of them will have decayed, and so 60% of 500 is 300 alpha decays, and 40% of 500 would be 200 alpha decays. At this point, we can probably stop, because take a look at it. It already eliminates answers A and B because both of them are less than the number of alpha decays after just a single half-life. And if after a single half-life I already have 300 alpha decays, I would then think that after three half-lives I would, I would have way more than 350. So D is the, problem, the possible or more, more likely answer. And if you press for time, I would circle D and move on. But let's keep going for just a little longer. All right. So of this one, again, we're going to have half of these decaying, so that would be 250 would still be Q nuclei, and the other 250 will have decayed. Notice we have 60% alpha and 40% beta. And so 60% of 250, well, let's see here, that would be 150, so that would be 150 alpha decays and 100 beta decays, so we have 300 plus 150, that already adds up to 450. But we're not done yet. One more half-life, that means we're going to have 125 that are still Q nuclei, and the other 125 will have decayed with 60% alpha decay and 40% beta decay. So what is 60% of 125? That's 75. And that leaves us with 50 beta decays, so we add up another 75, so we get 300 plus 150 plus 75 adds up to 525, and clearly you can see the correct answer in this case has to be D. So no fancy equations, just simply understanding that each time we have a half-life, half will remain the same, the other half will decay, it'll be 60-40 split, 60% of 500 is 300, then again, it splits to 250, 250, 60% of 250 is 150, and then it splits again, 125, 60% of 125 is 75, add the three together, adds up to 525, and those are the number of alpha decays that the sample will have experienced from the very beginning of the first three half-lives. And that is how it's done.